Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany, and thank you for tuning in this week to another episode. This is a place where I talk about wellness and health, and it's always emerging and changing and kind of just goes with the flow of my business and my own health journey. This week, we are talking about skin sobering, and I am really excited for you to listen to this episode. This is a brand new concept I have not heard of until I looked into this because I was connected with Dr. Erin and read her book, which is called Skin Sobering. It is on Amazon as well. And it is very, very fascinating. So I actually am now skin sobering myself. After doing this episode and after talking to her further, I just feel like it makes the most sense for me where I am right now. And I really want to encourage you to think about trying this yourself and definitely get the book because I I think if you're going to do this, you definitely need guidance and advice and kind of more recommendations than to just go cold turkey. So get the book and follow it, follow the protocol. But I think there is definitely something to be said about this. And she dives into the science in this episode and we uncover why skin sobering is a thing and why we really should be looking at doing it. And I actually think I might start sharing on TikTok about this because I feel like this is the type of thing that is kind of made for the TikTok platform where I could like openly share a skin sobering journey type of idea. So I might I might start doing that this week. So definitely go to TikTok and check me out if you haven't already. My account is called Biohacking. <laughs> it's literally that's all it is. And so yeah, my reasonings for skin sobering, I want you to understand kind of where I'm coming from, is that I'm in a preconception health stage right now where I'm really trying to cleanse and detox my entire life. And as somebody who is very healthy and who's been on a health journey since I was 16 and like had all sorts of things happen and healed all sorts of things, I feel like right now it's really important for me to cleanse and detox further. And I do need to do a full episode on everything that I'm cleansing and detoxing, but I also don't want to do it yet because I feel like I'm still in the midst of it. So maybe when I'm kind of feel like I'm at a point where it's all done, I will do it. But this kind of goes hand in hand with that. And I, even prior to recording this episode, I was in my bathroom and I was looking at my cabinets and my shelves. And I was like, I have so many products like SPF, vitamin A, retinol, vitamin C, serums, oils, moisturizers, a whole bunch of things for my hair. Like the list goes on and on. And I buy all green and clean products. Okay. Like I don't use pharmaceutical grade stuff. I don't use drugstore stuff. Like I I'm very picky on the ingredients. I have certain brands that I think are great. And, but then at this, at the end of the day, I was still in my bathroom and I was like, this is still a lot of products. Like I picked up my face wash, which was is from a company called Pharmacy. And I've been using this for two and a half years. And you turn it over and you read how many ingredients are in it. And it's like 25 ingredients, 20 ingredients. And I just, I don't know. I don't know if it's because it's springtime and I'm like doing a full edit of everything and I'm doing spring cleaning. I just went through my closet, but I was like, no, I'm done with this. This is not working for me. And I took all of my products and I put them in a bag, like a reusable Lululemon bag actually. And I tied it and I'm just going to put it in my closet. I'm not going to throw them away. I don't know when I'm going to go back to them. I don't know what it's going to look like. And I I don't want to throw them away right now. So that's kind of what I am doing. And I'm curious to see how the next month is going to go with my skin, to be honest. But that is like my overall reasoning is that I want to be able to get pregnant in the future, in the near future. And I don't believe that these ingredients, no matter how clean or green they are, are helpful for that. 
And I, I don't, I just don't think they are. So it's important to me. And I'm also reading this book called Preconception Cleanse and by Dr. Mary, and she's actually coming on the show. And she talks about this in her book as well. She talks about all of the chemicals that we are constantly exposed to, fragrances like BPAs, BPS, phthalates, everything, and how this causes so much endocrine disruption. And as somebody who has irregular menstrual cycles, who is healing from a cyst on my ovary, who might have PCOS and has had other hormonal imbalances, it's very important for me to try and be as healthy as I can and be exposed to minimal ingredients. And that's what I think that this includes. So I cleared out my shower, cleared out my cabinet, cleared out all my skincare. And that's kind of what I'm moving forward with. And I obviously will have to figure out what will happen when I wear makeup and how to take the makeup off. So stay tuned for that. But I work from home. So like the amount of makeup I wear, honestly, I wear makeup like once a week, twice a week right now. And it's always when I'm going out or if I am shooting a video or something like that, like that's basically the only time I wear makeup. So I'm really thankful that my lifestyle and my career actually lets me do this. And we talk about that as well on the podcast. But if you're interested, yeah, definitely get the book. There's a bunch of people who talk about this online, you know, there's content creators and definitely look at this if you feel like you need a bit of a detox from everything that you are exposed to. And it's interesting that this is happening because I think I mentioned this in the episode, but I have never been somebody to wash my body ever. The only time I use soap on my body is if I'm shaving and that's it. Like I, I don't use body wash. I don't use a bar of soap. I like, no. And I haven't since I was a kid. I I just don't like, I, I don't need it. I find that I don't sweat enough for it. And I find that the water does enough. And so it's so interesting that that has been the way that I've approached my skin on my body my entire life but yet I haven't taken that same approach to my face. So now I am taking that approach to my face as well. So we'll see. I'm sure there's controversy around this and what people think and you know all sorts of things, but don't knock it until you try it is what I would say. So enjoy this episode. I will link the book in the show notes and on my website, biohackingbrittany.com. And a shout out to the sponsor of this week by Optimizers. I'm getting a lot of questions about my supplement stack because I kind of post a little bit here and there about it. I will do a new podcast episode on this, my preconception supplement stack, hormone balancing supplement stack, I guess. And bio-optimizers is included in that. I take their prebiotic, probiotic blend every single day. I take two a day. My husband takes two a day and I am obsessed with it. I also take their magnesium and I also take their digestive enzymes. I don't think we could actually live without their digestive enzymes at this point. I've been using it for must be like two years now. And especially if I have any type of food that I don't typically eat, like sugar, grain, dairy, I really make a point to take digestive enzymes. Or even if we're out at a restaurant and the food might be a little bit more processed than normal than I like, it really does help make a difference on digestion to support it in that way. And I make my husband take them all the time when he drinks beer, which I don't want him to do. But yeah, we have a bottle in our car that he will take after hockey because they always have beers after hockey. And I'm like, when he comes home, I say, did you take your digestive enzymes? (laughs) And most of the time he will say yes. So we use bio-optimizers. You can use the discount code biohackingbritney in all capitals. And yeah, they have a bunch of other products as well. Linked on my website, linked on my show notes. And if you find this episode helpful, and you really want to like dive deeper into biohacking your cycle and your hormones, check out my biohack. It's not even called that. Check out my guide on my website. It's all about hormonal balancing, regulating your cycle. It has 32 recipes in it, and it is 
a fantastic place to start. There's a ton of information in there and it's all concise and in one place compared to, you know, a bunch of different podcast episodes or reels on Instagram or that type of thing. So enjoy this podcast episode and I will catch you next week for another one. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't already and leave a five-star review. I love seeing them. I think we're almost at a hundred reviews by now, which means the world to me. So thank you so much. Okay. Welcome to another episode of biohacking with Brittany. I am very excited about this episode because we are diving into all things skin and I really do care about the products that I put on my skin and the health of my skin. And I actually really do believe that the way that you treat your body really shows up in your skin, not just on your face, but also like your skin on your body as well. And we are going to dive into all of that. I have Dr. Erin joining me, who has a PhD. She is a health educator and entrepreneur, and she's the author of a book called Skin Sobering, Learn What You Truly Need to Be Beautiful and Makeup Ready. So Dr. Erin, welcome to the show. Hi, Brittany. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to your show. I want to read you the full subtitle. So it says, skin sobering, 99% of products age and harm your skin. Learn what you truly need to be beautiful and makeup ready. So we're going to be talking about products. And I know you care about your skin and you pick the best products. And you may be surprised with some of the things I have to tell you. Yes, I took a look through the book and I was definitely, definitely surprised. So uh, first of all, like, what does skin sobering mean? Skin sobering is actually a very simple concept, but difficult to believe. Skin sobering is the antithesis, the antigen to what public media marketing has been telling us for decades, which is our skin needs chemicals to be healthy. Well, our skin needs protection from the elements, you know, sun, wind, cold. Our skin needs good lifestyle. And our skin needs to be hygienic. Our skin does not need chemicals. Chemicals make our skin dependent on a temporary and instant beneficial effect, very similar to sugar and smoke. So we've been believing that skin needs chemicals, aka skincare products and cleansers, in order to be healthy and beautiful. And that's what skin sobering is going to reveal and completely debunk. Hmm. So is it essentially this idea that we actually don't need these products and we can have better skin without them? Like, is it zero products Like you don't use anything? So first of all, it's not an idea that one chooses to believe or not. It is a scientific fact based on anatomy, physiology, and all the epidemiology studies that people have done. You're correct. Our skin needs to be cleansed. Need, our skin need, needs to be clean, needs to be washed every day. But what to use to wash is is a good question. And once we wash our skin without stripping the oil off of our skin, we don't need to reapply chemicals to make it moist or to moisturize it. No different than baby skin, so where you just use water to wash it. All the products, if I have a chance to explain to you our own body's anatomy and physiology very briefly, and also the products physiology, sorry, the products biochemistry and, and chemistry, you will understand that, ah, never thought about skin that way and never really thought about all the things I've been hearing for exactly about 80 years is just economy and product driven. Wow. I definitely do see the capitalistic consumerism side of skincare. And honestly, it's really hard because you, like, even if you go on Sephora's website, like the section of skincare is just so alluring and you're just get excited about buying products and you're like, oh, I need this. I have this concern. And, but then even what I'm finding now is like, I'm just so confused because there's so much conflicting advice that I don't even know what I should or shouldn't really be doing. And I think a lot of women end up feeling like that. Mm -hmm. If I may give you one piece of simple science, what is our skin? I'm not testing people, but you know, people don't think about it that way. Like what is skin? Skin is an organ. It is the body's largest organ. 
Once I say that, people say, oh, yeah, 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 I know that. What we don't know is that skin is an excretory organ. Excretory, excrete. Skin's main function is to pass waste, is to get rid of the stuff through body's metabolic waste. Oil, salt, all kinds of sebum, sweat. That's what the skin is for. Skin is also a protective organ. It's an impermeable barrier made to block out everything that's outside to not enter our skin so that we could be safe. Our organs and our muscles, everything can be safe and healthy. Well, how could an excretory organ that's, mean, that's meant to poop absorb and eat like what advertisement's been telling us? Take in moisture, take in nutrients. Nobody that thinks about this logically, uh, the other excretory openings, like pores are the excretory openings. The other big excretory openings are our anus and urethra. We will never think that we should feed water to our urethra and feed nutrients to our anus because their job is not to do that. How is it that we are so ingrained? It's so ingrained in our minds that our skin can take in nutrients, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, what else? Vitamin A, everything from the outside. That's just against nature. So that one message alone was what made me want to read the book. The book was not written by me initially. It was written by Dr. Yutsuki. He is a Japanese author and a skin physician. He has written a book called Skin Fasting 20 years ago, and it is a bestseller in seven regions and countries in Asia. It's just not in Western world. And I read that book four or five years ago and was shocked by, I'm a health scientist for crying out loud. I should know about skin and health and science. And I am a smart girl. I should not be affected by wrong messages. But yet, for almost 40 years, I've believed skincare products is how you care for your skin. A good skin routine of putting things on, rinse, washing things off, removing things with removers are the right ways to take care of our skin. And that's absolutely not the way. So if women listening to this or people listening to this in general want to get started with the skin sobering method, how do you recommend people take the first step? Okay. The parts of your body that does not touch toilet seats and railings and public surfaces, it's not that dirty. Those parts are not that dirty. Your hands is a different story. You do need to wash your hands with soap. But most of the body parts actually can be cleansed and cleaned very effectively with the powerful water. This is where we, our whole body started to go dry. And most people start using skincare products for the very first reason. I'm so dry. They use moisturizers. And the dryness is actually caused by this cleanse-obsessed, cleaning-obsessed culture that we are in, that we feel that all germs should be killed and all microbes should be wiped off of our body. Well, not true. Microorganisms coexist with us. Our face, our skin has a milieu of microorganisms, good and bad, just like our digestive system. We now know that there's the digestive flora. We need microbes in our guts. We need microbes in our vagina. That's the only way our body knows what's good and what's bad and live in a balanced, immune way. So the first thing we need to do is not wipe out everything by using cleansers, which is synthetic. If our skin is dirty, use pure soap. Pure soap is the simplest and most effective form of cleansing. Anything else takes away too much of our secretion, our natural moisturizer. We all have natural moisturizers. Look at a baby skin. Baby skin is just perfect and normal. There's no oily skin, dry skin, sensitive skin. We created those terms and those conditions. Baby skin will be a bit sweatier, maybe a bit, I don't know, they don't even smell. So we need to stop cleansing with chemicals. And when you stop cleansing with chemicals, your skin will not need chemicals to replenish 
um, moisture, replenish what what you've been done to it. You, you the dryness will go away. That's the first step. That's awesome. So when you, I just want to clarify, when you say like pure soap, what are like brands that you recommend or like the actual ingredients that we should look for? Pure soap is basically made of a saponification process, lye, which is a alkaline and a fat, either it's a oil or animal fat. So any products that you see containing any soaps you see containing just a fat, tallow, olive oil, emu oil, and a lye. So about three or four product ingredients is the simple pure soap. Many, many soaps that are sold out there are not pure soap. They call them pure to tap into your senses of, I want to be pure. I want to be, I want to be elevated. So yeah. look for things that have very little ingredient. I, I don't really want to mention a brand and I also find it very interesting. You're my 13th, 14th podcast. And it's inevitable. The first question anyone asks is, so you're not wanting me to use product, but tell me which is the better product to use. (laughs) If I were to use soap, can you tell me which is better product versus what do you go through when you skin sober? Why do you want to skin sober? Does it actually give you healthier and better looking skin? Because my cream really made me look pretty. And make me look smooth and glowy. So really putting nothing on is going to make me look better and feel better? Those are the questions that I want people to really ask. So if you are only cleansing your face and your hands like once a day, and that's it, right? Like you don't use anything afterwards. I don't have a need to use anything afterwards. Although, let me tell you, when I need to go to a major function, if it is my girlfriend's wedding, if it is someone I haven't seen for years, I'm loading it up. We have to understand skincare products are essentially makeup without color. It has the exact same categories of chemicals, preservatives, a bunch of kind of surfactant, which is an emulsifier that is used to blend water and liquid. It's got, what else? They will put all kinds of chemical food-related stuff like vitamin C, vitamin A. And we seem to feel that food value should be applied to an excretory organ, which does not eat. And some people have gotten to a, a level of wanting organic and natural for their skin. Well, those are good food values for your mouth, but they're not necessary for an organ that is meant to pass waste. So I will load it up. I will moisturize my skin because my skin is healthy. My skin's already a great base, great canvas. So these creams and lotions, just like for the length of time that when they are on my skin, oh my God, I look great. And then I put a bit of makeup on. I just, I just glam up. My whole look just look wonderful because I have such a healthy base. Yet before, before when I was 54, I've been using these products for a long time. And it doesn't matter if I just put on more, buy more, use different brand, more luxurious. My skin is not healthy. My skin was not healthy. It was dry at the base. It was blemishing at the base. It was dull. It was thin. So no product help. It's almost like the hair when, you know, you use so much hair products that it doesn't matter what you use. It's kind of weighted down. You can't even style it anymore. Well, that's what your skin has become with years of dependent on products instead of letting it to regenerate on itself, renew and give you the most beautiful looking skin and only use products when you have an important function that you don't mind damaging your skin a little bit. Are you tired of feeling out of sync with your body's natural rhythm? Do you struggle with menstrual cycle related issues like fatigue, mood swings, and bloating? If you're looking to optimize your health and well being, look no further than the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide. This comprehensive guide is designed to help you better understand and work with your menstrual cycle so you can improve your energy levels, reduce PMS symptoms, and gain a deeper understanding of your body. With in-depth information on each phase of the menstrual cycle, you'll learn how to adjust your diet, 
exercise routine, and self-care practices to better align with your body's needs. One of the biggest benefits of the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide is its user-friendly format. The guide is easy to follow and provides clear instructions on how to optimize your health throughout each phase of your cycle. Plus, it's packed with valuable information and insights that you won't find anywhere else. So whether you're a seasoned biohacker or you're just starting out, the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide is the perfect tool to help you optimize your health and live in harmony with your body's natural rhythm. And with my expertise and guidance, you can trust that you're getting the best information and advice available. So why wait? Head over to biohackingbrittany.com to get your copy of the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide and start living your best life today. Right. What do you think about daily SPF? Okay, that is a good question. And my answer is sunscreen is the lesser of two evil. It is a double-edged sword. Sun damage is bad and cancer and burns and also aging spots and wrinkle. All these come from the beautiful sun that gives us life. But if we're exposed to the sun more than half an hour a day, your skin will take the beating. So how do you prevent that kind of a harm from the sun? Well, if you're serious about sun protection, the best form of sun protection is actually physical protection. A hat, a mask. Now it's okay to wear a mask. I always wore a sun buff whenever I cycle or ski. Those are fast activities that it's okay. People don't really see you. But when I have to golf or play pickleball, I will be so odd looking if I have this big visor and mask on. So during those times, I will put on sunscreen only for when I'm exposed to direct sun. There's a lot of fear being induced in our minds that we are so fearful of the sun that we need to load on skincare, sorry, sunscreen day in and day out, even against fluorescent light. Don't forget, sunscreen itself has harm to the skin, but it also has good in terms of protecting ourselves from UV rays. So I will use physical protection first. If I can't do that, I'll walk in the shades. I use umbrella. It is the best form of protection. Wear long sleeves and also has almost no harm to your skin. When that is not possible, um, I'm going to a wedding. I'm at a beach party. I'm not going to cover my face. I want to be seen. Then use sunscreen and a physical block, which is made up of titanium oxides and, you know, basically just reflect a UV is better than a chemical sunscreen where it goes absorbed into your skin and the rays can still get through your skin, but it just kind of gets, I don't know what the right term is, deflected or something. So, but if you really care about how your skin looks and how your skin health is, use the method that is the most effective. Don't use a method that is half, half good, half bad. And ask yourself, how many times during the day that I'm actually exposed to the sun directly for more than half an hour. And you'll notice that the amount of time you actually need to use sunscreen is way less than what you have been doing. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that review and, and perspective. I, I've always struggled kind of with this as well, because I think there's so many benefits we actually get from sun exposure in terms of like vitamin D and like hormone balancing and it's really good for our mood. And you live in Canada as well. And especially here on the West Coast, like the amount of sun we get is actually really minimal. And it's, you know, the sunniest months are from like May to the end of September. And during those times, like I want to be outside getting sun. Like I want to revitalize my body with like this natural sunshine. And honestly, it feels so good. Like I feel after I've spent an hour in the sun, I feel so good. And I do what you do as in like, I block my face with like physical ways of doing that. So like sunglasses, a hat always, and I let my body absorb the sun as much as it can. Absolutely. I agree with you, Brittany. It's, we are made to believe that the sun is so bad that we need to load our body with cream to avoid the sun. We forgot the goodness of the sun. 
this is my, what I've heard anecdotally. I, I, I think I've read it too, but I, it, you know, I, I don't have a, a study to reference it. That most of the sun damage that we have caused ourselves came from when we were much younger. The exposure, the sunbathing, the damage was done. What we are doing now, unfortunately, to many people, it does not reverse what you have done already. But that's not to say we cannot, we should not protect ourselves. But what you do is applaudable. Be with the sun, but don't bake yourself. Less than an hour or so of sun exposure is great for ourselves. And I, I, I do that every day. And my skin actually looks better and feel more dewy than when I was not exposed to the sun, thinking the sun is drying as well. No, I think people are too fearful of the sun. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. And then there's also the issue of the sunscreens having so many toxic chemicals in them that you're just lathering that on every day. And then the correlation between that and increasing your cancer risk versus like what the sun actually does to you. And we're starting to see more research come out about that. And people talk about that, which is great. But yeah, like you said, sorry, I should find that research. I had a book club meeting and one of the members, a lady, her husband just died of skin cancer. And she said to me that towards his last days, the doctor did another analysis of his skin and it, it was skin cancer. And the doctor said, your skin was not just damaged by the sun. It has so much damage by the chemicals of the sunscreen. So yes, sunscreen is not all savior. Protect yourself from, use shading, use, use shields, use sunglasses, use materials, cloth. Yeah. I mean, and there's like so many other things we're constantly putting on our skin. Like you talked about like lotion every day and creams and like the list goes on and on about all the different things that you can buy at this point. And it's, it's a little ridiculous. And it's interesting that you talk about this because I, growing up, I've never been somebody to use body wash. Like I only have done it when I need to shave because I have just felt like, why do I need to wash my arms? Like they, they're fine. Like the water will take away any sweat underneath my armpits. Like I don't need to wash my body every single day. Like I don't sweat that much. And now I'm 29. My skin is so soft on my body from doing that. And it, it just makes me think like I should take that same principle of less is more and apply it to my face as well. Yes. Or even, you know, less is more. If we do it once a week or so, not a problem. Our body can recover. You do a day in, night and day. That's what people do to their skin. They wash in the morning, they wash at night, and in between they load on products. <sighs> the damage that we do to our skin and we, no wonder we feel dry. No wonder people in their th late twenties, early thirties still have acne. That is a rite of passage for puberty stage, but our acnes are lasting longer, getting worse. Children, young babies are experiencing eczema from as young as six months old. That's completely because they were washed with chemical products from day one. Johnson Johnson, the most amazing baby product, sensitive and mild. No, water is for sensitive and mild purpose. The American Dermatology Association just put out a white paper, I think a few years ago, very strong and brave white paper saying that babies should not be washed more than twice a week. And water alone is enough unless they played in the dirt, unless they were outside being covered with exterior dirt. Airborne dirt is not a problem, but if your baby has gone into some poop, of course, you wash it with soap. Otherwise, water alone is enough. And that is brave because most of the dermatologists actually have a connection with beauty company. In my book, Skin Sobering, it, it referenced that doctors are the second largest sales channel of skincare products. So for the American Dermatology Association to state that it's against a lot of their members financial well-being. This is no different than the Canadian Food Guide saying dairy and meat are not the primary protein that you should have. 
and it's off our、uh, food guide. This is a brave act, no different than tobacco. The government, the Surgeon General, going after the tobacco companies and saying tobacco is harmful and cancers causing. And in in the eighties, when they did that, a lot of flax, a lot of fight back because it's a rich industry. Nobody is richer than the beauty industry. Brittany, do you know how much money one company spends on advertising beauty products? No, I, give me a oh my、guess. gosh, like a, a company in big number annually, annually. not not continue con, accumulate for the average、yeah. for、one、the、year. average beauty company. Just one company. There's ten big companies.、Just、oh, one oh company. Oh gosh. Oh, I like I have no idea. Like, oh, I don't even know. You tell me. <laughs> the number is. Eleven point five billion dollars on promotion and advertising, on marketing. That is one company. Eleven point five billion. You and I don't even can't even fathom how big that number is. So that's one company. That's P and G. Procter and Gamble spends that much a year. It's the largest single advertiser, bigger than financial industry and the car industry and the drug industry. That's why you see all these influencers, celebrities, social media talking about products. Sephora is owned by the richest man in the world. What's his name? Bernard, Bernard Ar- Ar- Arnold, Bernard Arnold,、uh, Mr. Arnold. He also owns Louis Vuitton and Hennessy and a whole bunch of luxury goods. They make close to forty billion dollar a year in revenue. So spending about thirty percent of it on. On advertising is the way business should go, and why won't we believe? And、uh, but before we end, I want to tell you about soap opera. Have you heard of the term soap opera? It's a series of drama shows that aired right after in the afternoon, like The Guiding Light, Bold and the Beautiful,、oh, yes, yes. Young and the Restless. Yeah, soap operas. I'm glad you're not hearing it. You're also not using products on your skin. So bravo. Soap opera was a is a jo- genre that was created in the 1940s by P and G. Actually, Palm Olive was the first company. They created a whole genre of radio shows and TV programs to sell soap to housewives. Wow! Right around after lunch. So since the 40s, for almost 80 years now, we have been fed by Our grandmother, our mothers, who have believed from watching TV that cleansers,、uh, skincare products, beauty products are needed because they have been brainwashed for since then. So for almost eighty years, that's what we've been told. Why won't we believe? Why won't you and I feel that the skin can only be healthy with chemicals? We shall never treat our skin with natural ways like water. We need to find the most luxurious, most organic, and the, the purest form of chemicals in order to make our skin beautiful. How ridiculous is that? But how easy it is to believe when your doctors tell you that, when your girlfriends tell you that, when your mother and maybe not your grandmother. Actually, I have a lot of friends who say, you know. My grandmother has really nice skin, and she just uses water. My husband has really nice skin; he just like he does nothing to his skin. Well, there's some reasons to that, and it's time for us to biohack and believe, and to really think with our heads and with our logic. And my book explains all that, plus the legal side of things: why skincare companies and beauty products. Are allowed to just make claims without getting themselves in any trouble. There is a whole loophole of things that we don't know. So I hope your readers will buy my book. If they don't want to spend the money to buy my book, I'll send them a free audio book or an ebook. I just want the message to be disseminated so young children no longer experience skin problems from day one with eczema. With allergies, us women don't have beauty issues, and adults don't have dry skin and itchy skin, and older people don't have psoriasis and dermatitis. All these, if started as a true kind of genetic reason, they are all worsened and exacerbated by chemicals on our skin. First gateway drug is cleansers. 
I want to share with you something that I've recently been working on that has a very short deadline, but they always have short deadlines, right? It seems everything today is ASAP. Anyways, I have not been able to keep up with my self-care routine as much as normal. Less workouts, less meditation, and obviously my nutrition has slipped a bit as well. And part of that is definitely going to Costa Rica. (laughs) I was starting to get really stressed out when I remembered that the magnesium breakthrough I take every night for sleeping better is also a great support for stress management. In fact, magnesium is responsible for over 30 body reactions and magnesium breakthrough is the only magnesium formula that delivers all the seven different forms of magnesium, each with its unique benefits. One of them being feeling more calm, centered, and in control of our stress levels. So now I am taking magnesium breakthrough in the morning to counterbalance the stress from coffee and calm my nervous system for the day. Since I started, I've noticed a significant improvement in my overall sense of well-being, and I definitely feel more chill. If you're also trying to balance life demands, give it a try. Trust me, your mind and body will thank you for it. Visit magbreakthrough.com slash biohackingbrittany and order now. In addition to the discount you get by using my code biohackingbrittany, there are always amazing gifts with every purchase. That's also why I love shopping at Bioptimizers. Go now to magbreakthrough.com slash biohackingbrittany to get your magnesium breakthrough and find out this month's gift with your purchase. Right. I love that. So if someone's listening and they have like eczema on their body or some sort of rashes that started appearing, they're an adult, what do you recommend for that if they are like maybe not using that many products on their body right now, but yeah. Like what do you think is causing that? Can it be fixed? What do you think? I am not a skin doctor. I'm not a dermatologist. I am a health scientist. So I'm all about prevention. Treatment, I would like them to question their doctors and dermatologists, but bring the information with them that they've heard that skincare products or cleansers are taking away the skin's natural protection and causing skin irritations, which then lead to multitudes of skin problems. So ask your doctor that. But the first thing I think they should think about is, what chemicals am I exposed to with my skin? Now, I've said that skin beauty is really from protection and a good lifestyle. Eat well, exercise, do not drink, do not smoke, and all this thing. Those things are hard to achieve to change your lifestyle. How hard is it to not have to put stuff on your skin at night and in the morning anymore? How hard is it to just wash with water and with the belief that this is good for me and not having to go through the hassle of lathering on stuff? So do something that is so easy and so effective. All you have to be now is to be convinced. And to be convinced is hard because there's thir- sorry, 80 years of messaging into your head already. So I would say to them, find out what you're using on your skin. They are not necessary. When you remove the cleansing stuff, start using water to cleanse. Of course, uh, you're not putting external stuff on it. Like if you put makeup on, you unfortunately, you have to strip it off. So begin with no irritation to your skin. When you have no irritation, no stripping off of your natural moisturizer, in 30 days, you won't feel dry anymore. Therefore, no need for moisturizing. And when the moisturizing is not needed because no more harm is done to your skin, you'll be surprised how your skin will renew, repair, and regenerate. Wow. So is that typically like kind of what people see is like when they start skin sobering like this, does it take about 30 days or like what do people typically experience in the first week? Mm -hmm. But skin usually takes about 28 days to completely shed the the first layer and the dermis produce new cells and rise up. So in, in about 28 days, our skin renews itself. So whatever problem it has, if you are not keep attacking it and causing more problems, it actually resolves itself. As your skin get older, it may take, you know, more than 30 days, sometimes 40 days. But in general, about 30 days, if you do not disrupt your skin, do not harm your skin, in 30 days, whatever problem you have 
really resolves itself. I tried the 30-day skin sobering challenge. First week, it was hell. I was so dry. I looked dry. I felt dry. My skin was pulling because I have been putting stuff on my skin to prevent my own oil gland to to produce anymore. My, my oil oil gland doesn't know what to do because it's been stripped dry and loaded on. So it's like, okay, I guess I don't need to do any work. You're just doing all the work. So by the second week, I wasn't feeling dry anymore, but I looked dry because the layers of skin that was gooed up by my skincare products never had a chance to naturally exfoliate to fall off. So now without all the goo, it's starting to fall off. Oh my goodness, it's like dandruff. By about the third week, the falling off, the looking dry started getting better. I wasn't looking dry. For me, it it got to about you know a month and a bit that I ran to my husband. I go, can you see this? I don't feel dry. I don't look dry. It's like, okay, I don't have makeup on, but it was exactly COVID time. So thank goodness of that, that I didn't have to see people. So just like quitting smoking and quitting drinking, expect a bad withdrawal period. But just like those two things, if you know the end result is going to be good for you. Persist. And if you feel really, really dry, use Vaseline. And there's another topic to talk about. The purest form of something that is the most natural. It's a moisture barrier that you can use it to help you through the phases of extreme dryness. But it takes about a month and a bit. And I am four years into skin sobering. You saw me with our Zoom. I'm 58. So you could tell that I have good skin. I don't have culturally good skin for my Chinese friends because we like white. You guys like tan. I don't have white skin. My skin's kind of a darker hue. So I am never told that I have beautiful skin by my own peeps. But I don't have bad, I don't, my pores are so small now because they're not clogged by the products anymore. I have no more acne. I have no blemishes. With a some life changes that I may have a, you know, a little zit here and there. It takes me two, three days. It's healed. I have no fine lines. <sighs> what else don't I have? My dark eye circle has gotten better because my skin actually now produces without irritation that it is making new cells. My dermis is thick. I definitely don't have wrinkles because I protect myself from the sun. What else? I don't have hardly any skin problems anymore. That's great. So it works. That's awesome. I re- and it saves you money. It saves you time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it saves the environment. Yes. I- no more jars. And traveling is so easy, Brittany. Yeah. I have a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, this just makes me want to go into my bathroom and throw everything out. Because <laughs> even like I'm a biohacker and so... I, I buy clean beauty, right? Like I, I read all the ingredients and I'm so aware, but then at the end of the day, like there's still ingredients and chemicals that are being put on your skin. Even if it's like this fruit serum that's from this organic fruit in Australia, or whatever the heck it is. Like at the end of the day, you're still adding on stuff to your body. And I, I really agree with you. So I'm going to go look at some of my things and, you know, kind of reduce the amount, because I I do think what you're saying has a lot of value to it. And I really encourage everybody listening to this podcast episode to get your book, because there's so much information in there that really explains this entire method step-by-step and all of the evidence and science behind it as well. Like we just touched on the surface of it, you know, but there's way more. And I, I think more people really need to hear about this. I want to give you one analogy to close up this whole thought of, oh, I know product quality, I'm going to use clean product. Well, this is no different than saying, well, I know smoking is bad, but I'm going to use the mild ones. I'll smoke Virginia Slim. It's the mildest form of smoke, so it should be good for my body. No, if the products are not needed and bad for you, going cold turkey is hard. So I agree with you. Try reducing first. By try reducing in a sense of not reducing the amount, but reduce the frequency. Instead of using it every day, use it only on days that you have to see people. Don't use it at all on days that you don't need to face the world with done up skin. And 
hopefully it's once every other day that now you use the product that you now you harm your skin to once every week to once every month. Hey, you just start a skin sobering and you will be surprised how dewy your skin looks. I don't even want to use makeup now because it's got some kind of natural rosy hue to it. And it's even, it's smooth. The tone is good. We use products because we don't like how our skin looks. And you don't like how our skin looks because we have kind of damaged it and made it look worse. So start, restart, reset. Do not believe in what marketing is telling you. Go with your logic, read the book, and hopefully we can start a skin sobering challenge. I love that. I love that so much. I will definitely add your book to the show notes and link it on my website for everybody to find super easily. Thank you so much, Dr. Aaron, for coming on the show. I learned so much from you and I really, really appreciate your time. This was great. Thank you, Brittany. Thanks for listening to another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. If you're interested in finding the show notes or the sponsors for this episode, you can do so on my website, which is biohackingbrittany.com. Remember to follow me on Instagram where I'm most active. My handle is at biohackingbrittany. And if you're interested in working together and you want to email me directly, you can do that. My email is info at biohackingbrittany.com. And I look forward to hearing from you and having you tune in next week.